Uh, hi, Kevin and Elle back with you. We're going to stick around for the next 30 minutes because we have a fantastic top five matchup in women's hoops on the way. We'll get you set for Louisville NC State in just a minute. Out of their big Too man. Too much happiness in that reader. Uh, plus counting down to tonight's and Misery Loves Company. Huge top five showdown with the key matchups determining factors when Louisville meets NC State. That's up next on ESPN. We only have 15 more minutes right here. We have a powerhouse, a juggernaut mm -hmm. matchup for you coming in about 15 minutes from now. Louisville and NC State. Emily Engsler's just been fantastic. Arguably the most versatile player on the court that you'll see tonight. In fact, we're going to set the table right now with someone who will be on the call, Rebecca Lobo, who's joining us now from Raleigh to help us break down this massive top five matchup. And Rebecca, give me a key matchup that we should be playing particular attention to when we're watching tonight. Well, you know, if we're going to be talking about a matchup and I'm on the call, we're talking about some bigs. Yes. And we'll start with <laughs> NC State, and that's Elisa Kune in their center inside. She leads them in scoring, leads them in rebounding, a really efficient post player. NC State plays a four around one kind of offense. They look to get her the ball inside, and she is surrounded by great shooters. NC State is number one in the country in three point field goal percentage, but they are looking to get the ball inside to Elisa Kunain when they can. And then for Louisville, Emily Engsler has having a terrific year. She is the anchor for them dis defensively, very disruptive. About two and a half steals per game for Engsler. She's a terrific rebounder. I don't know how much these two will go head to head. They have very different styles of play but both of them very important for the success of their teams you sort of mentioned it and I want to I'm gonna hammer home there you, we know you get juice for the post play so what do you think we're gonna see down low tonight I think it's going to be a great matchup. You know, for both of these teams, it, it, it's kind of a contrast in what they like to do. Both very good defensive teams. Louisville, one of the best defensive teams in the country. That's inside and outside. They cause disruption. They cause turnovers. They get out and score off of those turnovers. NC State, on the other hand, is a very good offensive team. I mentioned their numbers from the perimeter, where they are very efficient. Also, they're efficient when they get the ball inside to Kunain. So for NC State, they got to take care of the basketball against Louisville. Louisville's defense. Louisville needs to really do a good job getting out on those shooters and also trying to limit Kunain as much as they can. You missed, mentioned it. Elisa Kunain, the only center in the country to shoot 50% from the field, 40% from three-point range, and 80% from the free throw line. There's literally nothing this woman cannot do. Rebecca is going to be on the call for that game that comes your way in about 10 minutes from now right here on ESPN. Thanks, Rebecca. Thank you, men. Haley Van Lift getting ready. How about this showdown between Number three, Louisville, number four, NC State. Both teams good enough to win it all. Got a great matchup coming your way here on ESPN in less than eight minutes, right after Sports Center. We're getting ready for NC State hosting Louisville, Raina Perez. You may remember her as the one who had the game winning shot against Louisville in the ACC title game last year, off to another strong year, averaging just under nine points per game. That coming at the top of the hour, 730 right here on ESPN. My night is over. Yeah. Your night is just about to start here. Yeah. You got hoops coming your way? I do, yeah. I got a little double dip on the men's side, SMU and Memphis on the women's side, a top five matchup. In fact, we're getting ready to go to it right now. Louisville and NC State, going to be a good one. So I'll see you over there. Stay up with me, you know? Watch halftime. Yeah. And the game. Yeah. <laughs> we welcome you to ESPN's Thursday Whoa. Showcase. The rain, the cold, <laughs> it's not going to keep those fans away. Lined up at 6 Eastern, ready to get in. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. What an outstanding matchup tonight in Raleigh, North Carolina. Number three, Louisville, taking on number four, NC State. It is all part of We Back Hat Week here on ESPN. And there is incredible energy in the arena tonight. Take a look at the ACC standings. NC State 7-0, Louisville 5-0. As we welcome you courtside, hey everybody, Ryan Rucco alongside the Hall of Famer Rebecca Lobo. So happy to be with you this Thursday night on ESPN. Rebecca, NC State, they really have so many contributors to what is the most efficient offense 
in the country, top two in the country when it comes to offensive efficiency. But everything revolves around Elisa Kunanes. Yeah, this is a team that looks to their s senior center inside. And Elisa Kunane leads the team in scoring. She leads them in rebounding. And she's incredibly efficient as well. Now, we know NC State likes to play the four out one in offense and they've got the team built for it this season. Elisa Kunane inside. You want a center who when she gets the ball can go one on one and score. She absolutely can do that. And a center's dream is to be surrounded by shooters. Kayla Jones, Kai Crutchfield, Reina Perez, all shooting 47% from the three point line. Jakia Brown Turner can also stroke it from deep. But when you have a four out, one in, it leaves space. It leaves space for your big and it leaves space for the drive lanes. We're going to see this a lot tonight offensively from NC State. Well, NC State could certainly shoot it number one in the nation in three-point shooting percentage number three when it comes to bench points. Meanwhile, for Louisville, it's all about the D. That's their identity, is being disruptive on the defensive end of the floor. They limit their opponents to 49 points per game. Their opponents average 22 turnovers per game, blocks, deflections, steals. It's their defense that fuels their offense going the other way. This is the Louisville identity this season. This is how they get their points on the board, starting with their D. All right, for a little more more on the Cardinals defense. Let's check in with Holly Rowe. Well, the Cardinals are one of the best teams in the country in defense, allowing less than 49 points per game. And why they are doing so is because the engine of Emily Engsler. Jeff Walls told us that they have not had a disruptive defender like her since Angel McCautry roamed the hardwood. Her length, her size, and her strength, plus her motor, are getting more deflections, more disruption than they have ever seen. It will be essential tonight for her to be smart about it, though, because with four shooters surrounding Elisa Kunane, she has to know when to gamble, when to take chances, and when to stay home. He said common sense will be the most crucial thing for Emily Engsler tonight. The well, Jeff Walls team number one in the nation in defensive efficiency. NC State with only Utah being more efficient on the offensive end. Should be fun seeing a great offense go up against a great defense. Louisville and NC State underway at Valvano Arena at Reynolds Coliseum. See it. NC State starting out in man-to-man -man defense. That is their bread and butter. Sellout crowd, despite some inclement weather in North Carolina. Here's Cochran with the shot clock down to six. Van Lift finds an angle. Can't flip it in. Cochran on the putback. Olivia. Take a look at the starting lineup for NC State, 16 and two overall on the season. Reina Perez, Kai Crutchfield, Jakia Brown-Turner, Kayla Jones, and Elisa Kinane, the five for the Wolfpack. Here's Perez straight on three, he's good. 47% from three this season for Reina Perez. Take a look at the Louisville starting five. Chelsea Hall, Emily Angsler, both transfers, joining Van Lith, Smith, and Cochran starters from a season ago. Louisville with 15 straight wins after losing their opener this season in overtime to Arizona. Shot clock down to three. Cochran can't finish it. Perez the board. Really nice the patience, though, offensively for Louisville. If they don't get out and get something in transition, they have to take care of the basketball and find good shots. Jeff Walls talked to us about being very comfortable with Louisville using the shot clock on the offensive end. Yeah, he said, I'd rather take a shot clock violation than take a bad shot that will fuel NC State's transition game. Here's Brown Turner. Loses it out of bounds. NC State led by Wes Moore in his ninth season. You talk about linear progress. It's been unbelievable in his time at NC State, seeing the winning percentage rise and rise. You see, though, some struggles against Louisville in his time here, 3-8 and eight as head coach of NC State. 20-plus wins each of the last six seasons. 
Kiana Smith buries this step back three. She is having a terrific season. Yeah, she's been playing great lately, too. And that was a tough shot because that was really good, solid man-to-man -man defense. She just created a little bit of space to get it off. Smith shooting it at 46% from three on the season. Brown Turner, yeah, she traveled. And NC State will turn it over on back-to-back -back possessions. Jeff Walls joked earlier today with us as well on Packer Durham, and he said, you know, NC State is so much talent, the only way they don't go to the Final Four is if Westmore screws it up. <laughs> and I love that Westmore said, yeah, but they're ranked higher than us. <laughs> said, so I can say the same thing about Jeff, those two very good friends and love to poke fun at each other. As the rebound out of bounds is going to stay with Louisville. And Louisville continuing to get the ball inside to Cochran and, and Kunane's isolated on Cochran. NC State's not sending help, and a good job by Kunane to not get fouls on any of those possessions. Just play good straight up date. Third straight matchup with each of these teams in the top five. Here's Hall. Off her foot, out of bounds. Louisville turns it over. How about a game like this, Rebecca? Does it take a minute to settle down and get some of the jitters out yeah there's a lot of juice flowing <laughs> for both of these teams this is a big game they know it and sometimes yeah takes a little bit takes a couple sets offensively for you to settle they change the kiana smith three to a two foul on hall here and that's going to be the first personal on chelsea hall now, one of the things that jeff walls talked about is Having transfers come into the starting lineup isn't always met with smiles from the incumbents as Crutchfield misses the three. But he said Hall and Angsler are so well liked. They're such good kids that are so beloved by their teammates that there have been no issues with 40% of the starting lineup going to transfers. Yeah, it, did. it all lends itself to team chemistry. Such an important and vital part to any team's success. Here's Crutchfield. Jones, who Westmore calls the glue of this NC State team. Crutchfield will fire. No. Rebound. Brown Turner gets it to go on the putback. What a great job by Brown Turner because things have not been easy for NC State on the offensive end of the floor yet. And she just gets in there and creates something. That's a way to get rid of some of those nerves, right? Here's Van Lith working the post on Crutchfield. Cochran got it to go. Jeff Walls told us they're going to need Cochran to be able to hit that 15-footer tonight. Yeah, and you saw why. She had a step. She had the space to take it. You see Louisville extending their full court pressure, coming back to a man, but they will switch up their defenses throughout the game. It's going to be foul number two on Hall and free throws for Reina Perez. So you see Elisa Kunane taking a step off of Cochran to help out on Van Liff. That leaves Cochran open. Alana Smith is going to check in for Hall after the two quick fouls. This is a Louisville defense. We mentioned number one in the nation when it comes to defensive efficiency. They forced at least 20 turnovers in five straight games. They're disruptive. They're disruptive and quick, and, and we've seen them play man-to-man -man so far. They've picked up full, but they'll switch it up. They'll play full-court zone-trapping defenses. They'll play quarter-court zone-trapping defenses. Sometimes Engsler just starts to trap on her own, <laughs> but it just makes things disruptive for their opponent. Perez hits both free throws. Here's Van Lith. Hesitation, attack, left it short. Kunain the rebound, the flip out. Really good help side defense on that drive. Oh, Perez gets the angle, drops it back. That's two for Kayla Jones. Well, it is already deafening in here. Van Lith lost it, able to save it, doesn't have her dribble. And a whistle's going to go against Brown Turner and NC State. Raina Perez driving it inside out to Brown Turner, able to drain the shot. Sorry, out to Kayla Jones, able to drain the shot. Right now, the pace of this game absolutely in NC State's favor. Uh, 
You're not letting Louisville get out in transition, not turning the basketball over. That's a key for Louisville as well. They don't want NC State to get out and quick get quick buckets. That long two off the mark for Smith. Alana Smith. Brown Turner pushing it up the floor. Kanane gets a deep touch and traveled as she did. We'll step aside. Jeff Walls has made a massive impact at Louisville. We'll examine it when we come back here from NC State. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Verizon. Verizon is going ultra, so you can too. Well, Jeff Walls has had an incredible tenure at Louisville through 15 seasons, just picked up his 400th career win. You know, reality's reality. I haven't scored a point um, or gotten a rebound or a defensive stop. But we've had some really talented players that have, have, have believed in what we're doing and, and have put the work in to allow us to get to where we are right now. It's amazing when you look at where this program was. There are 32 seasons prior to Jeff Wall's arrival. Oh, what a play by Engsler putting it in on the second effort. And notice that they were isolating Engsler on the block, trying to get her a touch out of that timeout. That's one of the matchups, the matchup that Jeff Walls thought his team had advantage on the offensive end. You see the difference in tournament wins, final four appearances since Walls took over as Dan Lift turns the steal into two. Yeah, points off turnovers, points off turnovers. So important for Louisville. That's already four NC State turnovers. You saw the graphic earlier about how many turnovers Louisville's forcing of late as Angsler went down and Kanane eventually took advantage. Nice patience. We've seen it from post players on both ends of the floor. Cochran and now Kunane stepping into the mid-range jumper. Good pace out of the timeout. Angsler, there's the matchup again. No finish from Angsler. Held ball and the possession arrow belongs to NC State. Defense to offense. We talked about it at the top of the show here. Haley Van Lift just in a hard deny and able to deflect it to herself so she can go in and get the bucket. Every time you go against Louisville, you have to be careful about making those passes across the way because they can jump the route. Van Lift, the number seven recruit a season ago, just an absolute worker. Jeff Walls has to tell her to tone it back at practice rather than ever rev it up. A basketball junkie having a really nice second season at Louisville. Rejection there. Here comes Van Lith. Around the Cochran screen. Van Lith high off the window. No. Cochran, yes. Kunane had to come over and help on the drive, and that left her player, Cochran, Open to get that offensive board. Great work by the sophomore. And Cochran, six points already. Kanane out of the double. Knew where Crutchfield was, just a little too strong. And Angsler fights back for the rebound. Louisville looking to push. Van Lith hastily up the floor. Into the paint, finding the footwork, the bucket, and the foul. Pace, pace. We talked about it earlier in this quarter. It was favoring NC State. Now Louisville able to push out, get out in transition. Just a beautiful step through by Haley Van Liff. That's a post move, little girl. Holly Rowe. You talked about the tireless work ethic of Haley Van Liff. You have no idea. She grew up working out with her dad where they would work out sometimes seven days a week, three or four times a day, whether it was getting up at five in the morning. They would buy time at a local gym. They would go to outdoor playgrounds. Jeff Walls has actually had to dial it back a little since she got to Louisville and tell her sometimes she has to take a day off. But her longest time away from basketball has actually been 14 days. She said, let's just say I'm addicted to it. I love it that much. Her parents, Corey and Jessica, in the building, taking in the action tonight. I believe you saw Corey at the hotel, right? I did, yes. Getting free is Boyd laying it in with the left hand. Do you want to comment on his concession choices or no? <laughs> he was getting some snacks. Okay. He was getting some healthy snacks. 14-13, Louisville in front. Nice entry find. Van Lift to Engsler again. Again, uh, clearly isolating Engsler inside. Feel like they have the advantage there, and she's proven him right. Well, one of the things Jeff Walls talked about was sometimes Engsler, if she misses a couple of shots, can get shy offensively. He wanted to really reiterate to her, hey, no matter what, 
you need to keep shooting. She's getting opportunities early. Hey, Saturday, it's men's college basketball all day on ESPN at the app. At noon, Buddy Bayheim and Syracuse square off against Paolo Banchero and number six, Duke at Cameron Indoor. And then 2 p.m., Florida State takes on Miami at six. Number 13, LSU taking on number 24, Tennessee. What a big day. Oh, nice find. Diamond Johnson into the game, finding Camille Hobby for two. Diamond Johnson has been absolutely outstanding, transferring over to NC State, coming off the bench. Yeah, on the under out of bound, Van Lith got stuck on Hobby, and there is Anxler again, finishing with her left hand. What a difference maker she's been so far offensively. Six points, three rebounds for Anxler. An 18-15 Louisville lead. Holly. Well, she used her left hand there, but Rebecca, she's ambidextrous. I talked to her mom, Marilyn, today, and she said growing up she could write left or right, shoot right or left, and even bat and catch with both hands. She said at some point you've got to make a choice. How are you going to write, right-handed or left-handed? You see it serves her well on the basketball court. That's, like, super ambidextrous <laughs> when you can write with both hands. For sure. I know switch hitters that don't have a prayer writing with their off hand. <laughs> Van Lit, under a minute to go in this first. We'll pull up, can't hit the jumper. Nice box out there from Hobby. And here comes Johnson. Diamond Johnson, number six recruit in the class of 2020. Transferred from Rutgers, where she was all Big Ten second team a season ago. She'll fire, in and out. Hobby there, couldn't grab it. Trying to save it, does. Johnson not shy, doesn't get the roll. And the shot clock turned off for a final possession here for the Cardinals. NC State narrowly defeated Louisville in the ACC championship game a season ago. Anxler dishes out. Six seconds left in the quarter. Van Lith on the attack. Fading. Doesn't get the roll, and that'll do it for the first. Louisville, a three-point lead after one in Raleigh. What an exciting first quarter going back and forth. NC State involving their bigs. Beautiful pass into Camille Javi with the finish with the left hand. I want to see some more left. Give me some more left. There's some left. Week. The Pat Summit Foundation, founded by Pat and Tyler Summit back in November of 2011, it awards grants to nonprofit organizations to support and educate the public about Alzheimer's disease. Granted $500,000 to 34 counties across Tennessee in 2021 and has awarded over $3 million to the Pat Summit Clinic in support of its efforts. Well, guys, I had some really personal, beautiful moments with Pat Summit when she was fighting Alzheimer's. And one that I haven't shared publicly, but I'd love to is, you know, she, she was starting to really struggle with her memory. And I went to her house and every single day she was doing word games where she would find the word, find the word. And in true Pat Summit fashion, she was timing herself and she would put her initials PS timed it out, here what was what I did one day, here's what I did the next day with the time and the initials Pat Summit. She fought that brutal disease till the bitter end and uh, we, we love her and miss her dearly, but we hope we can continue to educate people about Alzheimer's and continue contributing to that foundation. Amen, Holly, and, and what a story to illustrate the competitor that Pat Summit was. Nice take there from Kiana Smith to get the scoring started in this second quarter for Louisville. A 20 to 15 lead. Louisville has done work in the paint. They have also been disruptive on the defensive end, staying true to form. Another turnover there from NC State. It's now 16 of 20 Louisville points in the paint after 14 of the first, 18 in the first. Smith looking for two more. Can't find it, and the rebound secured by Boyd for NC State. Here is Johnson flicking it across. Hobby 
Faces up and hits. Ivy does a really nice job when she comes in to spell Kunain and gets her minutes in small chunks at a time, but makes a difference when she's in the game. On the attack, Warhols can't finish out of bounds off of NC State. Gonna stay with Louisville. We've seen this, you know, neither team is really sending a ton of help when the post catches it in the mid post area. So here, square up, face and shoot. All the posts in this game capable of that. Smith misfires. Nice effort there by Boyd and it's gonna be a foul on Peyton Verholz. You'll take that, you'll take that. Your freshman gets a foul because she's attacking the offensive glass, that's okay. Louisville longest active winning streak in Division I with the 15 straight victories. Only loss, season opener to Arizona. Meanwhile, for NC State, their only losses against number one South Carolina back in November and then an overtime loss to Georgia. Hobby trying to find an angle as it's stripped away another turnover. Here comes Smith, bouncing to Verhol. She gets fouled, and will shoot two. Last possession for NC State. They had to work really hard just to inbound the ball mm -hmm. on the one end of the floor. And then when they came down, Louisville continues disruptive defensively, hands everywhere. Going to the line, number 12, Peyton Verhols. Seven turnovers already for NC State. That's what Louisville does. NBA Friday matchup has DeMar DeRozan and the Eastern Conference leading Bulls starting a three game road trip in Milwaukee against the Giannis and the defending champion Bucks. They're just two games back of Chicago. Our coverage starts with NBA Countdown 7 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. You calling that game? I'm not calling that game. I, I am actually calling Bulls Bucks later in the season though. So okay. you weren't far off. <laughs> we can go through my whole schedule. Okay. I, I think our viewers would like to know. <laughs> Louisville leading NC State 21-17. Second quarter action. Anxler back in. Now in Louisville in a trapping quarter court. And Anxler, you just see her going back and forth. Kanane gets smothered. Cochran there defensively. Here's Mikasa Robinson. Angsler on the attack. Nice find. Cochran the finish. I mean, Angsler, <laughs> terrific passer. She can handle at her size and then just toggle back and forth here. She'll go to trap, then she'll leave, and then <laughs> she might trap again. Kanane, short. Angsler the rebound, the push. Here comes Louisville, a six point lead. Smith. Separating. Can't hit. Offensive board, Cochran, she's fouled. And Cochran's going to shoot two. Olivia Cochran off to a terrific start tonight. Olivia Cochran is working her tail off. At one end of the floor, working hard defensively. Then you see her sprinting end to end, continues to work, says, no, don't come into me. I'm a little bit tired. Oh, this is the previous possession. Working, working, working. This last possession, she's like, you know, don't pass it in as I post up. I need to catch my breath. And then she went and got the offensive rebound. She's working her butt off, Rye. Well, that's not something that she's always been able to do. Last year, she came in and her conditioning wasn't exactly where it is right now. She said she's been doing extra cardio on the VersaCliner, the Alter G with a nice block there from Kunane. She said, I am now better able to stay on the floor. My conditioning is where it needs to be from working out after practice every single day. It is hard to battle on one end of the floor and then just sprint and continue to work on the other. And we've seen her do that the last couple of possessions in a row. Angsler looked like she might have a bloody nose after taking that rejection as Alana Smith gets the sudden spike on Johnson. That three no good from the wing, but another chance here for Louisville. Cochran digs it up and puts it in. Olivia Cochran now with 11 points. She got the offensive rebound, passed it back out, and then was able to score inside. Working, she's just working. Cochran averaging seven and a half per game. The sophomore, former McDonald's All-American. This Louisville defense just locking down NC State. 
Here's Smith. Off on a three. Robinson battles. Another offensive rebound for the Cardinals. Louisville right now with its largest lead of the game. It's nine. Nice find. Exler to Smith for two. Louisville has 13 more field goal attempts. They're all over the offensive glass. They're turning NC State over. The energy level has just been better for the Cardinal. An 8-0 Louisville run and a timeout taken by NC State. Louisville's playing with a ton of energy on the defensive end of the floor, and then they have been efficient offensively as well. Woo, what a cut, what a pass. This may sound mad, but when UConn comes knocking, Colonial life will be rocking. The best player in the land, Gino Dawn. Number nine, UConn, number one, South Carolina. Thursday at six on ESPN. Really looking forward to that terrific matchup next Thursday. Got a great one here as well. And Wes Moore coming out of a timeout, Holly Rowe. Well, he was brutally honest with the Wolfpack in that last timeout, saying, you guys are getting your butt kicked out here on the rebounds, bringing the ball up the floor, whether or not you're fighting for position. So you have a choice to make right now. Are you going to get out there and be tough and compete or get embarrassed? You've got to decide. Wow. Westmore told us this morning that one of the things his team needed to work on is to be more consistent with their energy and urgency. And he felt like they had been their last couple of games. But that points to what he was talking about in that huddle. They've got to get to the defensive glass. Louisville killing them, getting the second chances. They've got to take care of the basketball. Louisville turning them over. Well, I mean, Louisville right now has 12 more field goal attempts already. We're midway through the second quarter. That's a remarkable difference. Smith can't finish. Anxler, another offensive rebound. The putback, no. Battle and the rebound finally secured by NC State. Ten offensive rebounds now for Louisville already as Van Lift gets ready to check back in for the Cardinals. Crutchfield guarded by Smith. Deanna Smith comes up with a rejection. Here is Smith. Up the floor to Anxler. Anxler curling it up and off. Dixon gets to it. Anxler gets a paw on it. But eventually it's NC State. James Travel. And another turnover for the Wolfpack. That's going to be their eighth. Seen a couple of travels, a couple of turnovers when it looked like NC State would have an opportunity to score. Big difference when it comes to the turnover battle with just one from Louisville thus far. Hall checks back in for Louisville. Picked up two early fouls. Keanu Smith out. Van Litt in as well with Dixon, Robinson, and Anxler. Louisville has been able to do a nice job of a, a, a nice rotation, subbing players in and out so they can keep this intensity in this energy level themselves. Van Litt has been shooting it well from three of late after sorting one for 19 to begin the season. Here's Hall, straight on jumper, won't go. Another offensive rebound. Dixon gets clawed, it's out of bounds. They got to stay here with Louisville. Both Dixon and Van Lith were inside, crashing on the glass. One of them was going to get the board. What great energy. And Wes Moore always says, you know, I, I think more than anything else, rebounding determines wins. I always said, said it again today to us. So you know he's not thrilled with the rebounding effort thus far. He'll be happy about that, though, from Jones who's going to get called for a foul. After a terrific effort, Kayla Jones is called for the personal scrambling after the loose ball. Both players showing incredible hustle. Healer, Jones going. The official said she undercut Anxler, and that's why the foul is on Jones. It looked to me with the naked eye that it should have been on Anxler. Or no one. Or nobody, yeah. Anxler a three is good. <laughs> <laughs> this kid just has incredible energy. An 11-0 Louisville run, a 14-point lead on NC State. And 
that's going to be a foul against Louisville. You're going to get a derisive cheer from the NC State fans. Lisa Kunane was posting up hard on Liz Dixon, trying to keep her off to the side. NC State has not scored in the last five minutes and 20 seconds. They have just two points in the quarter. Mm. Here's Perez giving it up. Brown Turner. Oh. And this is a problem. NC State's gotten some good looks from the perimeter. They just haven't been able to hit them. Wow, that time they gave a long leash to contact from NC State. And they own the possession arrow. They'll own the basketball. Jeff Walls is fired up. Jeff Walls, I believe, and this is just me reading lips and body language, I don't think he actually thought there should have been a foul. I think he was trying to call a timeout and thought it should have been awarded. But he was given a long leash there. Joseph Vasily, Jeffrey Smith, D. Cantner are officials this evening. Number three, Louisville against number four, NC State. And a travel. NC State turns it over again. Hey, coming up at the half. Jeep halftime report. Best in the ACC and the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame finalists are revealed. Louisville is in their quarter court trapping defense and you're trying to speed a team up when you're trapping. You're trying to get deflections and steals, but you can also speed them up by get, forcing them into a travel. And that's what happened on that last possession. Here's Van Lith around the conference screen. Van Lith, nice hezzy, and the finish. And the pressure continues. NC State having a hard time inbounding the ball. They finally do. Robinson with a reach-in foul. NC State facing its largest deficit of the season right now, down 16. Haley Van Lith playing with a tremendous amount of confidence. Just the hezzy and the look away. And she gets herself to the right side of the rim. Van Lith, six points in this first half. Cochran has 11. Angsler has nine. Six for Kiana Smith. Meanwhile, Reina Perez, the only member of NC State with more than four points, and she has five. Crutchfield to the corner. Brown Turner lines it up, airmails it. Loose ball, Kanane, Cochran, loose ball. It's going to be a foul. And free throws here for Jada Boyd. NC State leads the nation in three-point field goal percentage. And right now, they are one for seven. And those are the only really decent looks they've been getting is when they move the ball around the perimeter and have a shot from outside, but haven't been able to get any of them to fall. A Diamond Johnson, one of those threats, hasn't gotten the looks. Six minutes and 40 seconds since NC State last scored. And it's still running. Louisville on a 13-0 run. You see those 11 possessions for NC State. 0 for 8 with three turnovers. Mm. Sold out crowd here in Raleigh. You've heard their displeasure with the officials as NC State finally dents the drought. We've certainly heard their displeasure. We have. It's a couple of people right behind us who are displeased. I've heard some things <laughs> I've never heard before. <laughs> Angsler, not that time. Crutchfield gets fouled by Angsler. <laughs> Jeff Wallace is looking over at Angsler and he's saying, like, calm down, you fouled, you fouled. <laughs> but you know what, in some ways, it's all right. You know, it puts NC State to the free throw line, but at the same time, it's energy, 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 defensive energy. How about, Rebecca, a player like Angsler, Holly talked about it in the open as well, who has this freedom sanctioned by Jeff Walls as well, to roam defensively. I mean, how rare is it for a head coach to even have that level of comfort to allow a player to break scheme as often as Angsler does? Well, she has the instincts and she has the ability to know when to do it. And when she can do it and take those risks where it's not going to hurt her team, I don't know that I've seen a more disruptive defender in women's college basketball this season. 
reason that Jeff allows her that freedom, she has a 4.0. She got it last semester and this semester. Not only is she smart on the court, off the court, it's building a lot of levels of trust with Jeff Walls. Of course, Holly would know that. Of course. Today. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be a foul against NC State. Both teams are in the bonus. So free throws coming here for Louisville. The game very physical in the first quarter, not a lot of stuff called. Certainly tightening up here in the second. I've seen some animation from both coaches. <laughs> <laughs> Westmore very unhappy. And his contention there was he thought the officials were going into a charge call and then changed it to a block last is, moment. Is that from reading his lips or his body language? Body language. He did the whole thing. Okay. It was perfectly <laughs> pantomime. So. Smith hits the free throw. 34-19, Louisville in front. You saw the graphic earlier. Third straight meeting between these schools where they've both been ranked in the top five. Second free throw, no good. Flag down by Diamond Johnson, leading the ACC in scoring off the bench. At 12 and a half points per game, yet to score here tonight. Johnson around the screen from Kinane. Johnson dives in, flips up, no roll. Kinane couldn't handle, out of bounds. It's going to stay with NC State. Really good defensive possession for Louisville. Johnson comes off a couple of screens up top. She's really good in the on-ball screen. There was nothing there. Kunane rolls. There was nothing there. Ends up taking a mid-range floater. Jeff Wall's going to take a timeout. Louisville a 34-19 lead with 1.33 to go in the second quarter. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Emily Engsler has been the disruptor for Louisville on the defensive end and offensively able to get inside, post, score, make passes, cut, finish, get to the offensive glass. She has been doing it all here in this first half. Taking a look at Emily Engsler, a McDonald's All-American. Back in 2018, the number nine recruit played her first three seasons at Syracuse, was the co-sixth player of the year in the ACC a season ago. And Leading the team this season, 10 and a half points, eight and a half rebounds. She has been terrific. How was that defense, Ryan? Incredible. I mean, how was that defense? And the possession arrow belongs to Louisville. Ball goes into the post, and you need to know where you can pass it back out. Comes in, hesitation, two there, now three there, and it doesn't matter. You cannot see an open teammate at that point. Great job defensively by Louisville. Knocked out of bounds. Going to stay here with Louisville. By the way, the other co six player of the year a season ago in the ACC is also here tonight. That's Jada Boyd from NC State. Here's Anxler on the attack. Stops on a dime. Traveled as she did. And Louisville a rare turnover in this first half. Meanwhile, NC State has missed its last 10 shots. It's over an eight minute span with no field goals. A byproduct of Louisville's pressure and the way they speed you up is NC State has taken some open shots but early in the offense because they don't know if they're going to get another one. There you go. Johnson, a nice find to Boyd. Executed the two for one also. Eight second difference game in shot clock. Well, you can tell this crowd just clamoring for something to cheer for. Cochran knocks it out of bounds as Kunane couldn't handle the rebound. And NC State is going to have a final shot here at the end of the second quarter. You try to handle a rebound <laughs> while you're trying to box out Cochran, too. Holy cow. The ferocity with which Louisville has attacked the offensive glass tonight 
11 offensive rebounds in this first half. Diamond Johnson, the attack. Seven seconds left, the pull up, no. Rebound, Angsler with time. Angsler will heave early and nearly banked it in from half court to end the first half. Louisville, a 34-21 lead over NC State at the half. Nine points, 10 rebounds for Angsler. Cochran with 11 points. Jeff Walls has to be happy with the first half effort. He's with Holly Rowe. Coach, you forced 10 turnovers in that first half. How would you describe your defense right now? Well, we're, we're playing with a lot of intensity. We're doing a great job of mixing up and trying to keep them off balance. But Holly, I'll be honest, I've heard the weather's bad outside, and I think we should finish up right now. <laughs> for everybody's safety, for everybody's safety, we ought to all just head home. They're not going to do that, Coach. But Olivia Cochran, you got her involved early in the offense. How she changed the score for you? She's doing a great job battling in the low block with Kunane. She's come up with some big offensive rebounds to keep some possessions alive. We've done a really nice job of not rushing at the offensive end. They're a team that they, they want you to take quick shots. If you take quick shots, if they go in, it's great. But if not, which we did on a couple occasions, they've turned those into transition baskets. So we got to keep our composure on offense. And the same thing, we got to keep limiting them from second chance opportunities. Please come back out for the second half. I'm just going to say I'm that. Worried about safety. <laughs> safety first, as we always say. <laughs> Oh, Jeff Wall's team, a 34-21 lead at the half over NC State. Time to send things to the studio for the Jeep Halftime Report. L. Duncan, Carolyn Pat, and Sean Farnham coming your way. I, too, am a huge fan of quit while you are ahead. You know what I mean? Which is why once we do and kill oh, this first block, so, we're out of hey, here. You. Yeah, you're going to go great. then? You haven't done any actual work yet, Sean Oh, sorry. Not yet. <laughs> I thought that's my best work I've done. I didn't say anything. Speaking of work, boy, is it work for NC State. This is a little bit of a shocking halftime score right now. Sean, what's happening for the Wolfpack? Well, you know, I, I, Holly Rowe, why is she the best sideline reporter She's in the great. history of the business? Because yeah. she steals what we're going to talk about right now. Like I've been telling our producers, like, hey, we've got to talk about the turnovers yeah. that Louisville's been able to force how they've scored off them. Holly's first question, Coach, what about those turnovers? They're disruptive. Louisville is a very disruptive team. They average 22 points per game off of turnovers. That's second best in the ACC. It's fifth best in the entire country, and they went to work at the defensive end, forcing 10 turnovers, creating 12 points off of those turnovers. And what that does, it kind of speeds you up a little bit if you're NC State and gets you out of your rhythm and flow. You're not comfortable because hands are swiping from every which way, and they're collapsing down low on the paint. They're closing out the three points point shooters, one of the really good three-point shooting teams in women's college basketball's NC State. They're just shooting 14% from beyond the arc. Impressive with the de defensive disruption by the Cardinals. Well, the defense threw the punch for Louisville, but they also got points in the paint. They did a nice job. Rebecca talked about Emily Anxler, but it's also Olivia Cochran who was the force inside, the anchor that Louisville had the ability to go to. Cochran is that post player that has versatility. Look at how she pulls Alyssa Kunane away from the basket. That opens up the lane. It makes things happen. She can get on the glass, but it wasn't just her offense. Defensively as well, it got dark when the ball went inside in the paint for NC State. And what that lead to? Again, points off turnovers for the Louisville Cardinal. We certainly didn't you know, think we weren't going to see intensive defensive displays because these are the two best defensive teams among them in the country, right? But they're supposed to be offensive stalwarts, this NC State Wolfpack team, and they certainly didn't look that way. And because of that, they now have the biggest and are facing the biggest halftime deficit of the season, down 13 points. But again, they're NC State. They potentially can find a way. They've got to get going from the perimeter, a place where they have made mincemeat of very good teams because they get going early. That wasn't the case in the first half. Well, we are so excited to exclusively reveal the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame finalists. They've been announced, and for the 2022 class, it is headlined by the incomparable Becky Hammond, six-time WNBA All-Star, played her college ball at Colorado State, where she finished her career as the program's leading scorer. Coach, as for the rest of the finals, what stands out to you here from the players list? Well, I think that you've got great candidates as finalists, and other than Becky Hammond, though she did play for the Russian team in the Olympics, these are Olympians also that have played in made their mark uh, and so 
It's going to be a great class. Well, and, and I know if I had a voter that was anywhere near me, I would tell them that Debbie Antonelli is my pick right Debbie, here. I mean, come yeah. on. She's one of us. Yeah, I've worked exactly. with Debbie multiple times. She is a pro's pro who values and loves the game so much. She's invested her life in it. Uh, and it's always great seeing a colleague of ours have their name up on that list, potentially be a Hall of Famer. Debbie, I'm pulling for you. If I know any voters, I'll let them know. To start calling Same. and, yeah, petitioning. We love that. Congratulations to all of the finalists. We are about to wrap things up. Haley Van Lith, we're going to get you back out here for what is a little bit of a shocking, right, halftime deficit for NC State. This has been the Jeep Halftime Report. ESPN's Thursday showcase all part of this year's We Back Pat. Number three, Louisville, leading number four, NC State, 34 21 here in Raleigh, North Carolina, as we get ready to start the second half. We welcome you back courtside, Ryan Rucco alongside the Hall of Famer, Rebecca Lobo. We talked about Louisville's defense, number one in defensive efficiency in the country. Seeing it up close, that performance in the first half, wow. Yeah, we talked about it, NC State's experiencing it, going against that effort, that intensity, that energy in the first half. It absolutely set the tone. Active hands, deflecting passes, getting inside, bodying up on the bigs, blocking shots. Here, just getting the ball in bounds and over half court takes effort for NC State because of the way Louisville is playing defensively, swarming as well. Everything has been hard for NC State, and sometimes when you're facing that kind of pressure, you take the first open shot you get. And I think that happened at times in the first half for NC State, taking shots quickly. And you look, the best three-point shooting team in the country, only one for seven from the perimeter, and there were some decent looks. At eight for 25 from the floor overall, only Utah has a higher offensive efficiency than NC State in the country you take a look at the numbers and everything slants towards louisville in that first half but a nice start here to the third quarter alisa canane with just her second field goal yeah deliberate get it the ball into the big girl inside isolated and let her go to work here is van lift separating taking and hitting she's shown so much confidence here today her shooting number is much better over the course of that of ACC play than it was in the preseason. And man, she has just looked so confident in her mid-range game today. Giving mom and dad a lot to cheer about. Crutchfield, no. Here comes Van Lift, pushing pace with Hall. Hall gets doubled. Van Lift open, fires, and hits from three. Picking up full, making it tough again just to get it over. You can't take a breath, you know, offensively. You can't take a breath if you're NC State. As soon as, as, soon as you get the ball in your hands, there's pressure on you. Oh, nice find. And Kanane finishes off the delivery from Perez. Uh, Perez, a great job there, holding on to the ball just the right amount of time to, to deliver to Kanane to finish easily. Two points in the first half for Kanane, already four here in this third quarter. But Van Lith has had it going. Here's Van Lith dumping it into Cochran. Face up jumper is good. Olivia Cochran with 13 points. Six of eight from the floor. I think Jeff Walls had this one scouted well, told us before the game, we're going to need Cochran to hit some mid-range jumpers, and Anxler's going to have a lot of opportunities. Yeah. Both have been true. Kanane gets fouled by Cochran, and Elisa Kanane is going to shoot a pair. 
Haley Van Lith stepping into her lefty stroke with so much confidence and also knowing when to shoot, when to pass, just the right amount of time. Reverse pivot gives you the space when your defender's a little bit bigger. Van Lith started the season one for 19 from three, her first six games. Last 10, 38% really starting to heat up. Yeah, Jeff Wall said I wasn't worried at any point because the shots were going in in practice, and she's a worker, and she's putting the time in, knowing that eventually her shots would start to fall in games. 41-27, Louisville lead. Smith turns the corner. Kiana Smith can't get the roll, punched it out for Kayla Jones there. Here comes Crutchfield. And a travel. We've seen that a couple times, right, from NC State? Yeah. A travel. Again, I think it's a defense just speeding you up. Little extra hop on an entry pass. The Crutchfield, who they call Clutchfield because of her shooting in NCAA tournaments. She's 19 for 27 from three in her career in the tournament. Paul? That was Navy. a force. Yeah. That was a force. Jones, no. Kanane, the offensive rebound, can't get the bucket, does get the foul. And that's going to be number two on Cochran. Holly? Elisa Kanane has had a very busy day. Not only is this in a top five matchup, but at 8.30 this morning, she was in class doing a presentation on species diversity that are calculated coverage versus sample size and the equations they use to decide that. So she is a conservation biology major. And I, I, I know I just said those words, but I don't understand anything that just came out of my mouth. It is a very complicated topic, but she says she hopes to get into conservation eventually and teach businesses how to be more sustainable. She's been up for very early this morning getting ready for that presentation. And then, you know, just a top five matchup. No big deal on her day. I like the species diversity, Holly. You and I often, when we stand next to each other, wonder how we could possibly be the same species. <laughs> Kanane trying to go for the steal. How about the patience from Olivia Cochran? Reverse pivot, face up, realize you can take the ball inside right in front of the student section that was starting to come to life. Again, though, a missed three from NC State on the other end. Reverse pivot, take it in, pump fake, get both defenders in the air, and then as they're on their descent, Going up for the shot. That's one of the things post players have to learn is patience. And this young sophomore has it, and she's had it on display here today. NC State, one for nine from three. They've missed their last eight after hitting their first attempt. Here's Hall turning the corner. Nice D from Kanane. Cochran gets fouled. Oh, big time ACC women's hoops Sunday. Wake Forest and Louisville, 2 Eastern. Virginia Tech, NC State, 4 Eastern. If you don't have ACC Network, go to getaccn.com for instant access. You know, Jeff Walls was talking to us about it before the game today, Rebecca, but you think about the ACC, a lot of really good teams. You've had seven teams ranked in the top 25 at different moments throughout this season. You know, Jeff Walls thinks it's definitely the best the conference has been in his 15 years at Louisville. A lot of teams that could be punching tickets to the tournament. Yeah, that NC State Virginia Tech game has got to be fun to watch on the interior. Kunane going against Liz Kitley. Two of the better low post five players in the conference. Here are the teams currently ranked in the ACC. These two in the top four, and then Georgia Tech, Notre Dame, North Carolina, and Duke. Brown Turner hits the free throw. One thing just to project ahead a little bit, but to keep in mind from the past with these two teams, in the conference championship game a season ago, which NC State eventually won on a Reina Perez game-winning bucket with two seconds remaining. Louisville had an eight-point lead going into the fourth quarter, and NC State came back to win it. 
here. We see NC State stepping out into a zone defense. <laughs> do, you th do you think that gentleman's making it on our mics? Sometimes you just want to know. He thinks 44 is pushing Kanane every time. That much I know. <laughs> Angsler knocked out of bounds. Seven to shoot here for Louisville. Good job looking for the high-low, though, by Louisville against that zone. Hall tosses it into the backcourt. Van Lith retrieves. Three to shoot. Van Lith lets it go. Doesn't get the roll. Offensive rebound. Dixon, she's fouled. Well, that has been such a massive story in this game. Louisville just menacing on the offensive glass. Surrounded. Surrounded by NC State players and still able to come down to the offensive board. 13 offensive rebounds for Louisville. Paul floats it into Dixon with Cochran getting a breather. Anxler, Keanu Smith, Haley Van Lift, the others on the floor. Van Lift's jumper short. Rebound, Anxler flying in, saving another chance for Louisville. 14 offensive rebounds now. Hanksler a three, won't go. And Boyd able to save it for NC State. Hanksler earned whatever shot she was going to take by crashing the glass <laughs> the way she did to get that opportunity. Diamond Johnson still yet to score in this game for NC State. Westmore talks about what a spark plug she is for their team. And another turnover from NC State. When we come back. We are going to remember a legend, Lucia Harris. That's next on the Thursday Showcase. Lucia Harris, one of the pioneers of women's basketball, passed away at the age of 66 on Tuesday. In 1992, she became the first African-American woman inducted in the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. An absolute legend and an icon. Lucia Harris was 66. For a little more on Lucia, let's check in with Holly Rowe. I wanted to say thank you to Felicia Hall Allen, who tweeted out a wonderful documentary about Lucy Harris Stewart last night that I was able to watch. And you know, she was drafted by the Utah Jazz, the first and only woman to be drafted in the NBA. But she was ready to start a family, ended up having a, a child, and and not taking that opportunity. And you know, she grew up in a tiny southern town in Mississippi. She was born in 1955, and she said, "I was just obsessed with basketball. She used to hide under the covers at night and watch basketball games, even though her parents." Wanted her to go to sleep. <laughs> Oscar Robertson was her favorite player, and that's who she modeled her game after. Awesome stuff, Hal. Louisville, a 14-point lead. Nice backdoor cut. Smith lays it in on the delivery from Dixon. Well, the pressure from Louisville just does not stop. You can't just exhale. You can't take a second to just exhale when you're going against Louisville. James on the attack. Doesn't get the roll. Rebound Hobby. She gets fouled by Angsler. Screening down, and you can either curl over it or go behind. Smith goes behind, gets the easy two. And on this end, Hobby's done a really good job in her minutes. She's played hard. She's battled defensively. She's been efficient offensively. How does NC State get back into this game offensively against this Louisville D? Well, first, it's going to start on the defensive end. You've got to get stops. And a stop doesn't end until you get the defensive board. Mm. And uh, Louisville getting to the offensive glass has been a problem. And then if they can get some stops, they can try to push and get things early in transition. And if not, they've got to work their offense and not just take the shots that Louisville wants them taking. Under four minutes to go in the third, a 14-point game. Number three, Louisville leading number four, NC State. 
So Louisville seeking its 16th straight win. Longest active winning streak in Division I. Van Lith. Not that time. Nice box out there from Hobby. Yeah, that was really good battling that time on the boards. Keeping Dixon away from the offensive rebound. Here's Perez being hawked by Hall. Johnson, hesitation, floater, can't finish. Hall the rebound, Johnson still yet to score. Van Lith the Euro, and the floater won't go. Hall battling another offensive rebound. Van Lith goes cross court, knocked out of bounds towards us as Hayes got to it. That's the kind of energy NC State's going to need. They're going to need to get really active. Try to cause disruption like we've seen Louisville cause all game long. See if Madison Hayes and Isaiah James can bring some of that off the bench for NC State, both on the floor now with Diamond Johnson, Reyna Perez, and Camille Hobby. Perez, the only starter on the floor right now for the Wolfpack. NC State has gone five and a half minutes without a field goal. Dixon faces up. Doesn't get the roll. And the rebound secured by Hobby. James, step back three, won't go. Offensive rebound, Hayes. Perez gets a good look. No. And Another I offensive rebound as Johnson flags it down. She gets free and lays it in. It's going to take effort like that. It's going to take effort like that for NC State. Boy, this crowd is just starving for something to cheer about. That ended a six-minute drought without a field goal as the leader goes for Anxler. She has 11 points and 11 rebounds. Johnson gets space. Can't hit the three. Another offensive rebound. James keeps it alive. NC State one for 12 from three now as Perez twists it in. They're going to have to get some of those threes to fall, though, Ryan. They're going to have to get some of those threes to fall. This crowd trying to urge on NC State. Hanksler on the attack, lays it in, plus the foul. A chance for three for Emma Lee. Great decision by Angsler because she could have pulled the trigger on the three, but instead gets the defender in the closeout. Hobby is inside the restricted area. That's why it's called a block and just a great job by Angsler finishing inside. Angsler with her fifth double-double of the season, 21st in her career. 13 points, 11 rebounds. Well, you see how tough and gritty and physical Emily Engsler is, and there's a good reason. She grew up in Queens, and where she was living at Roosevelt Island when she moved, she actually ended up playing with the boys in the CYO League through 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. The only girl on the team, her mom Marilyn said, we used to walk into gyms and all the little boys would be like, what is this girl doing here? She quickly made herself at home, and you can see some of that grit and toughness in her game to this day. Especially when it comes to 7th and 8th grade boys, you better have some grit and toughness. <laughs> Speaking from experience. That's right. Coaching them. Johnson leaves it short. Robinson the rebound. Here's Anxler. Anxler behind the back. The three rims off. No highlight as Smith couldn't get the roll from the corner. Noble has gotten a little more productive at the end of this quarter. Excuse me, NC State but they just have not been able to pin anything together when it comes to stops and scores. Here's Perez, mid-range, no. Rebound, Alana Smith, two-for-one opportunity for Louisville. And when NC State's gone on their mini runs, it's been Inksler who's answered. She's done a great job quieting the crowd. Fifty-one, thirty-seven. number three Louisville leading number four NC State. Cochran lost it. Lost her shoe as well. Just the fourth turnover from Louisville. 
That was such a key for Jeff Walls talking to us before the game, not turning it over so that NC State didn't have a chance to run. Perez on the attack, flips it up, doesn't get the roll, loose ball, and a travel. So a chance here for NC State with 1.2 left in the quarter. I mean, this crowd has not had much to cheer about, and they are so live. Yes. Just desperate for a reason. Desperate. A sellout here at Valvano Arena at Reynolds Coliseum. Perez gets it in. Johnson gets it away. No. Felt like that would have been a big one to end the quarter. But NC State one for 13 from three tonight. Remember, they lead the nation in downtown percentage. Well, at NC State, number three Louisville leading the Wolfpack and Emily Angsler, just a massive reason why. Yeah, she's brought the energy and she's brought the fire on the defensive end, got into the offensive glass, known when to look for her own in order to quiet the crowd. She has been outstanding, as has Olivia Cochran. The bigs for Louisville have done a great job. You heard Carolyn Peck talking about at the half, the points in the paint for Louisville where it's been led by those two young women. Been a terrific, active crowd here for NC State. They have not had any sort of run to really sink their teeth into, thanks in large part to Emily Anxler. Start of the fourth quarter and a 14-point Louisville lead. Alana Smith lines it up. Short. Rebound, offensive. Another one for Louisville, their 16th of the evening. That pass high, but Smith, nice hands. Really nice hands. Shot clock down to five. Anxler gives it up. Cochran can't get it to go. And a jump ball is called. The possession arrow belongs to NC State. Now they're just making sure that the ball hit the rim and that it was not a shot clock violation before the held ball. But it did graze the rim, and thus is a jump, and the possession arrows NC State's. Long time for NC State to have to play defense on that possession because they gave up another offensive board. Kai Crutchfield, Elisa Kinane, Diamond Johnson, Jakia Brown-Turner, Kayla Jones, the five on the floor for NC State. Johnson gets pushed, and a foul called against Alana Smith. Johnson with two points. She's one for 12 from the floor. NC State shooting 29% as a team. They're one for 13 from three. They're the number one three-point shooting team in the nation. And a foul called here against Robinson, who wanted a jump ball. She's the do-everything Swiss Army knife of this Louisville team. Yeah, it could be their heartbeat on the defensive end. And she did a great job anticipating the entry pass into Kunane, and she was there, but she got a piece of her arm. You just know if NC State's going to get back into this game, they're going to have to start hitting some threes. And their losses this year, they have had two losses up to this point, South Carolina and Georgia, and they shot a combined 33% from three in those games. There's a correlation. Shot clock down to five. Brown Turner, long two. He's good. But still hanging tight. This is only a 12 point game. Robinson loses it and didn't turn it over. Now she did. Brown Turner finds Johnson. She finishes.
mean, when is the last time NC State scored four straight points? It might be the first quarter, and this crowd reacting as such, feeling some momentum as Cochran sticks the jumper. And a timeout taken by Louisville. What a big jump shot from Olivia Cochran to try and quiet this crowd. She's shown poise when she's caught it on the block, and then here she's got the bigger defender coming out. Our outstretched arm doesn't matter. Hockey following us here on ESPN, and that kid is fired up about it. His moves all break were just outstanding. Cheerleading coaches, son's gonna be fired up about that. After 12 straight missed threes, Johnson buries that one, and it's in single digits for the first time since the 639 mark of the second quarter. A nine point game. Cochran, no, denied. Kanane has it. Crutchfield cuts in, kicks out. Brown Turner for three. It's a 10 2 NC State run. Six point game. Five on the shot clock. Van Lift with two to shoot. Fires it up. Can't hit. Johnson blasting into the front court. All the way in. Brown Turner lays it home. The shots from the perimeter that NC State was missing in the first three quarters, they're starting to make now. Dribble penetration, and the kick gets you the three. It started with Diamond Johnson hitting after the timeout. Johnson cuts in and knocked out of bounds. A lot of Smith, Haley, Van Lith there. And then getting out in transition, Diamond Johnson just making the right decisions. Gets Anxler to commit before she makes the pass to Brown Turner. A 12-2 run for NC State to make this a four-point game. Kanane puts it in, plus the foul. Just a great job. Cochran turns her head, able to get the ball into Kunane, getting the and one. That's something Jeff Walls talked to us about before the game, saying NC State has gotten easy buckets off inbounds against us. Can't allow it. Did there. It's a one-point game. The pressure from NC State working. Another turnover. A 15-2 NC State run. The place is in a frenzy. All right, Al, looking forward to that. In this game, NC State trailed by 14 entering the fourth quarter. Teams trailing by 14 plus are three in 1,278 this season. But NC State has cut it to one with still six minutes to go. They're on a 15-2 run. And it's important to note, Louisville, one for six in that run with all those turnovers. When Louisville doesn't score, they can't press. And the press has been what slowed down NC State. Johnson, a three. Off the mark, Kanane gets the rebound. Another chance here for NC State. Johnson, another one. He Good! NC State has taken the lead. 55-53 with 5.30 to go in the fourth. What was Jeff Wall's huddle like, Holly Rowe? Well, guys, before this last timeout, Jeff Walls warned his team, Diamond Johnson is in the game, and she is going to change the pace. We've got to pick her up. Her plus minus at that point was negative one. Two minutes later, it's at a plus 10. Jeff Walls saw this coming, warned his team, but they didn't react. 
Washington. Diamond Johnson has changed this game. She has been the leader of this 18-2 run over the last five minutes. NC State in front. Crutchfield, the entry pass stolen by guess who, Emily Engsler. It's because Louisville was trapping Diamond Johnson, giving her the attention, and then Engsler came over and saved the play. Defense! Defense! Here's Van Lith. Can Louisville calm things down? They dominated the first three quarters. It's been all NC State in the fourth. Shot clock down to five. Angsler with it at three. Alana Smith lets it go. No, no. A shot clock violation. And NC State's defense in this fourth has been terrific. But one of the rare times where Louisville can still extend pressure and control the tempo a little bit. Here is Johnson. Johnson will fire, you bet! A 21-2 run. The roof's ready to come down. Angsler able to finagle a whistle. If we go just a little bit shorter, it's a 17-0 NC State run. Simon Johnson's been incredible. And you see her here, just a little jab step. Smith steps off, and she has the confidence to step into it. An NC State team that couldn't buy a three for the first three quarters has certainly come alive. I asked her today what it means to come from Philly and be a point guard. She said, I have to be scrappy. I have heart. I have tough. I grew up playing on the playgrounds. There were no fouls. I played with the boys my whole life. She is so tough, so mentally tough, and she's bringing all that Philly with her right here tonight. Well, you ain't kidding, Holly. Was one of 12 from the floor through three quarters, had just two points, has 11 here in the fourth. And how about the three-point shooting for NC State? They started one for 13. They are four for five since. That's in the fourth quarter. The number one three-point shooting team in the nation has witnessed the regression to the mean. Johnson trying to work Van Lith. And a foul called on the floor against Haley Van Lith. Hey, Saturday. It's men's college basketball all day on ESPN and the app. At noon, Buddy Beheim and Syracuse squaring off against number six Duke at Cameron Indoor. Then at two, Florida State takes on Miami at six. It's number 13 LSU taking on number 24 Tennessee. Louisville trying a variety of different defenders on Diamond Johnson, seeing if they can find one to slow her down. Not yet. Canine fading. No. All the rebound, still so much time to go. 3.15 left in the fourth. NC State a three-point lead. Van Lith goes around the back, had it taken away. Jones read it and stole it. Nearly turned over into the corner. Brown, Turner, got it. Angsler lost it. Three on one. Crutchfield to the cup. A 26 to four fourth quarter for NC State. 
the difference in their energy, the difference in their urgency. Two of the things Wes Moore said they needed to be more consistent with. Well, they've been consistent with their three-point shot, their energy, their urgency, their effort, their ability to eff efficiently score here in the fourth quarter has been incredible. 26 to four, NC State has outscored Louisville this fourth quarter. After not being able to hit anything for three quarters, the Wolfpack are 10 of 12 from the floor. And Louisville has turned it over six times in this fourth after they had turned it over five times total through the first three quarters. Holly Ruff. Jeff Walls in his huddle just now told his team, we've stopped guarding. Our hands are down. We're not disrupting. They've stopped what has made them so successful in this game. He also wants them to start taking the open looks. He looked at Haley Van Lith and said, you're open. Take that shot. Everybody just has to calm down and give us what is open. When you're missing shots on the offensive end, you're on your heels as you're going back defensively. You're not quite able to set up, not able to pressure the way you want. You might get cross-matched. So as their offense has faltered here a bit in the fourth, their defense has as well. Crowd has been on its feet almost the entire quarter. And a foul is going to go against NC State. Louisville, I believe Rebecca is now out of timeouts as well. Jeff Wallace has had to spend them throughout this fourth quarter trying to stop the momentum. And he told us he would. He told us he would if he had to, to, to try to stem the tide. He hadn't had to do it until the fourth. Here's Smith, still time for Louisville. Hall, jumper, rims off, rebound NC State. Under two minutes to go now. Number four, NC State with an eight-point lead on number three, Louisville. And a foul. Free throws coming here for the Wolfpack. NC State looked uncomfortable offensively through the first three quarters. And here in the fourth, it, it has been a complete turnaround. Led by Diamond Johnson, that possession, patient, looking to take advantage of the mismatch once Robinson got on Kunane. NC State has outscored Louisville 27 to four in the fourth quarter. Kunane hits them both. Angsler back in. It's a 10-point NC State lead. A reminder, Avalanche Kings. NHL Thursday night coming up next on ESPN. Kiana Smith kicks. They need it. Angsler can't get it. Cochran is fouled. A lot of it started for NC State when they started securing defensive boards. Number one, they were, they were turning Louisville over, getting offense that way, but they stopped letting Louisville get second and third opportunities. Smith can't bank it in. Johnson the rebound, zips up the floor, gets fouled, will go to the line. Fourth quarter points. This has been incredible. We saw those long droughts without a field goal. Two stretches of more than six minutes from NC State through the first three quarters. Well, Louisville now doesn't have a field goal since the 8.05 mark of the fourth. And Jeff Wallace telling us, if you got to hurry. Diamond Johnson misses the second. Gets the deflection. Johnson has 12 points in the quarter. Johnson into the paint off one leg. Now. 
Wexler. Gives it up to Cochran. She has 19. That's going to be a charge. The patience she was able to play with earlier in the game, now you're hurried up. Now Louisville is a team that's sped up because of NC State's defense. A really good job, help side, stepping in. Kayla Jones. Cochran checks out. Pressure from Louisville. Crutchfield dribbled into the arms of Kinane. Johnson will back it out. Clock is the friend of NC State. This absolutely masterful fourth quarter from the Wolfpack. Johnson. Oh, the hesitation and the dagger. Johnson lost it. Robinson on the other end, always playing hard, lays it in. Brown Turner fighting the pressure. Jones will help get it across, but then Johnson loses it out of bounds. Diamond Johnson, a complete difference maker here in the fourth quarter. Making a couple plays relaxed everyone else on her team. It made it easier for them to step in and hit the threes that they needed to make. This one's on Diamond Johnson. She was one of 12 from the floor through three quarters. Five of seven here in the fourth. 14 fourth quarter points for Johnson. And that jumper goes down. Four seconds left. A fourth quarter to remember for NC State, the number four team in the nation. Dominates the number three team in the nation, Louisville, in the final frame, overcoming a 14-point deficit to claim victory. Thirty-one to nine. NC State outscores Louisville in the fourth. Largest deficits overcome this season entering the fourth quarter. This the fourth largest. Teams now four and 1,278 when trailing by 14 plus entering the fourth. Diamond Johnson is the spark and the reason why she's with Holly Rowe. Diamond, your team was down by 14 points to start the fourth quarter. Why were you so calm in that moment to start this comeback? Uh, my shots wasn't just falling. I just needed a, a little more energy for my teammates to pick me up. Once that happened, the defense started going, shots started falling, everybody started getting the ball. So I think we don't, we don't want to lose. We have a special group. We're trying to do something special. So we can't afford no more else. Your coach told you, you guys have to get tougher or you're going to be embarrassed. I felt like that changed in that first half. How did that change? At halftime, we knew we needed to be more physical, more tough. Um, that's what they were doing for us, and that's how they was up in the beginning. But once we had a talk with our team, we knew that physicality and being smart with the ball, rebounding was going to be a big effect in this win tonight. You told me earlier today that Philly guards are scrappy and have a lot of heart. How did you find your shot in the biggest moments of this game? Um, I just never lost my confidence. Diamond Johnson, 14 of her 16 points in the fourth quarter. Saw Westmore and the NC State players and staff thanking this absolutely incredible crowd at Volvano Arena at Reynolds Coliseum. They were looking for a reason to cheer all game long. Wow, did they have reasons finally in the fourth quarter. Yeah, Diamond Johnson gave them the reason. They flipped the script. They did to Louisville in the fourth quarter what Louisville had been doing to them in the first three. Turned them over, able to score, stop getting 
letting them get offensive rebounds. What a fourth quarter for NC State. Absolutely incredible performance in the fourth from the Wolfpack as they claim victory over number three, Louisville. Up next, NHL hockey, the Avalanche and the Kings. For our producer, Kerry Callahan, our director, Mike Roy, Holly Rowe, and the Hall of Famer, Rebecca Lobo. I'm Ryan Rucco. Thank you so much for joining us for our Thursday showcase. We'll be back next Thursday with UConn, South Carolina from Columbia. Good night from Raleigh. Now let's send it to Sean McDonough and Ray Ferraro. What's going on? Welcome into Nothing But Net alongside Kelly Gramlich, Chelsea Gray, and Muffin McGraw. I'm Kelsey Riggs, and what a rematch of last year's ACC championship we got between NC State and Louisville. Our group chat had been going off about it all week <laughs> long, and it definitely delivered. The other thing, though, we were talking about, Coach, is the nerves going into a game like this. We were excited at ANSI. When you have a top five matchup, I'm sure that you were the calmest person in the room day of. Well, no, actually, day of, I was a wreck. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, I was just, I didn't want to go around anybody. But when the game started, that's when I relaxed. How about as players, <laughs> what's it like? Chelsea, you were more of those than me. <laughs> Well, for me, I was a little bit like anxious in the locker room. And then once the ball goes up, it's like over with and I'm yeah. fine. It's like a calmness of when the ball goes up. It's true. But NC State was very tight to start, which was surprising because yes. you'd think they'd settle in with their crowd and being in Reynolds. And it took them quite a while to get going, Kels. Let's look at how it all happened. But we talked about what big a matchup this is. Take a look at this. Both of these teams on hot streaks on the way in Louisville and Jeff Walls. 15 straight victories in a row. That is the longest active streak in men's or women's basketball right now. On the other side, you've got NC State, West Moore's group with 15 straight wins over ACC opponents. Guys, something's got to give. Number three, number four, top five matchup, and how about a sold-out crowd at Reynolds Coliseum? Lots of fun for these two teams, as we mentioned, a lot of history between them, too. I think they remember what happened last year. New season, though, and in the second quarter, Louisville and Olivia Cochran. Chelsea, she was really key for what Louisville was able to do early in this game. Especially when Kunain was coming over to try to challenge shots. She was there in the post, ready for the putback. She had some good footwork, having great finishes. That's exactly what Louisville needed to score. Westmore not happy with the way things are going early. Louisville led 34 to 21 at the half. Third quarter, more from Cochran on the inside, Kelly. Olivia Cochran was a revelation in this game. She's got to play like that every game, and Louisville was very much in the driver's seat. And this crowd stuck with NC State. It felt like if they could hit some threes, Kels, they could get back in this game. Louisville led 51 to 37 after the third quarter. Okay, let that sink in for a second because things are about to change. They're the number one shooting three-point team in the country percentage-wise. Well, you can't leave them open outside because things like that will happen. And how about the way Coach Diamond Johnson was able to change the game? Well, she definitely was the key to the game. She she made the three that put him ahead, and then she backed that up with another three to give him a little bit of a cushion. But Jakia Brown-Turner did the same. She hit four for four. She was really exceptional in that fourth quarter. Back and forth we go in the turnovers. Early in the game, NC State turned the ball over a lot. Kelly, it seems like what was going on at Reynolds started to get to Louisville. At one point, Ryan Rucco said he thought the roof might explode off of this building because Wolfpack Nation was on fire and Diamond Johnson gave them something to cheer about in the fourth quarter. She took over, y'all. Gave them the lead with that shot to end the third quarter. Since first lead since early in the very first quarter, NC State, a remarkable comeback under three minutes to go. Louisville trailing by six. The ball stripped away from Angsler and Kai Crutchfield on the other end, lays it in. NC State with a strong finish in this one. They go on to win it. 68 to 59. What a comeback from NC State to come out and win this one at home. Take a look at this. Headed into today, teams that were trailing by 14 points or more entering the fourth quarter 
Only three of those teams had won in over 1,200 games. That is pretty crazy. Now make it four because NC State gets the job done. And one of the reasons they were able to get that job done, always a team effort, but when you got somebody like Diamond Johnson coming in and making that kind of fourth quarter impact, man, you know you're able to change the game. Diamond, congratulations on the win. Welcome to the show. And tell us what changed for you guys in the second half. Defense definitely changed. Um, we came in here at halftime. We said defense was going to win the game. Our shots was not falling for the first three quarters, so we just had to lock in, get stops, and score play by play. Um, we definitely rebounded and then the last quarter or so. Um, we just got more heart. We just got more physical with them. Um, they was physical with us in the first three quarters, so when we came back, um, we came back strong. We just huddled up, stayed together as a team. We followed the game plan, and we got the job done. Diamond, you went in one for 12 into the fourth quarter, and then you lit it up. You had the confidence to keep shooting the ball. What gave you that confidence? Um, I got this saying on my wrist. It says, nobody can stop me but me. Um, I just looked at it on the bench um, when I, before I got in. I was ready to get in. I was anxious. Um, I knew my shot was going to fall. I would, you know, I'm never stopped shooting. Um, that's what shooters do. They keep shooting. They don't lose their confidence. So, and definitely the energy tonight was crazy. That boosted me to a whole nother level. Um, you know, once I get to talking, I'm in my zone and my teammates is there backing me. So that's that. That's what it was. <laughs> I definitely feel that of being in your zone. But what does this tell you <laughs> about your team with this win tonight? That we can be great. Uh, we trying to do something special. We Yes, we need to come out strong from the beginning, but the team, we just never let down. We never let go. Uh, we never give up. So uh, that's what I love most about this team. Um, we got seniors that's leading us, and we have young ones that come in ready to play. So I think we just, just us staying together and just knowing we got each other, knowing what we can do. Diamond, you could have stayed at Rutgers, averaged 20 points per game, maybe been Big Ten Player of the Year, but you came to NC State. Why did you come to NC State? Um, as you can see tonight, the atmosphere, um, Coach Moore is a good coach, and uh, I knew the team since they recruited me out of high school, so I knew this was a good fit. Even coming out of high school, I did pick records, but um, once I knew my next move, I knew um, NC State was going to be it. Um, I knew we were going to have a good group this year, so we just trying to do something special. I'm here to win um, and play me, play my game. Diamond, you're talking about the atmosphere, and we got to see what it was like. I wish we were there to feel what it yeah. was like. But I also want to know, you look calm, cool, collected right now. What was that locker room like afterwards? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure uh, uh, former players, they know how that go after the win. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we was definitely... Uh, it was just unbelievable. We were so hyped. Um, the comeback was just crazy. We down by 14 in the fourth quarter. Uh, we pressed a lot. So we, it was just the energy. Was It was just there. It was the energy for me. Diamond, it was pretty incredible to see Louisville jump out to that quick start, especially on y'all's home floor. What do you think was the turning point for you guys to come back in this game? Just us sticking together. We huddled up. We talked amongst each other. Um, we just knew we didn't want to lose. We don't want to lose. After the two losses we had this season, we said we can't win no more if we want to be a great team. We can't lose no more if we want to be a great team. So I just think we have a lot of heart. We take that to heart when teams come in and try to beat us on the home floor. We we don't want to be beat on the home floor. So that's that was our turning point right then and there. Well, it must have been a ha great halftime speech. I'm wondering <laughs> if there's anything you can share that was said at <laughs> halftime. Or was there a player maybe that stood up and said something? Um, before the coaches come in, we have a talk amongst ourselves. Um, we just said rebound, and none of us was frustrated. It was still um, good vibes and everything. Um, we just knew he was, you know, was going to come in here, you know, say a couple things. But we stayed <laughs> together. Um, he just, you know, slammed the paper on the floor, and we know what that means. So uh, we, just, we just knew we had to stay together um, and not be frustrated. Sometimes saying little or yeah. nothing says even more than anything else. But you guys didn't have to do a whole lot of talking. You let your play show it there. Diamond Johnson, 16 points tonight and a huge win in a top five matchup. Congratulations. We appreciate the time. Thank you. Appreciate it.
All right. How about, first of all, great interview from Diamond Johnson, but also the insight we got on, on what that win was like as, Louis, as NC State rather has now won their 16th straight conference game. Coach, this is a league right now that has six teams that are ranked in the top 25. I mean, it's not an easy league to win in. What does it say about NC State and what they continue to build? Well, this was a game that gives them Final Four hope. I think this is the game that gave them that confidence to know we are an elite team. If you can come back from 14 down in the fourth quarter, you know you got something special. Second largest comeback in a top five matchup since 2004, I think, which was a, a Duke team against UConn. So Chelsea wasn't on that team. That was a little <laughs> before her time. But anyway, a great comeback and, and just an incredible comeback. And we're all sitting here. Let's be honest, okay? Chelsea picked Louisville. Coach and I are like, oh, my gosh, they look so <laughs> stupid. I thought NC State was done. Yeah. I, I didn't believe what Diamond just told us. But those players did, and that's really what mattered, Chelsea. Yeah. I think – this group getting this win, like it brought them so much closer. And if you think about it, they have months before, I don't know, a month, two months before you go into NCAA play. So having this big of a win against this type of opponent, it prepares you for times like this in the tournament when it's win or go home in that type of atmosphere. And to see that, I got to be I got to be really excited <laughs> if I'm Westmore. You know, that's a good point. And when you think about the NCAA tournament, the ACC prepares you for the NCAA tournament. And boy, they are going to be prepared going through the gauntlet that is the ACC. Well, and coach, there was a time that I looked at you in the fourth quarter when Louisville had those two big turnovers back to back where they just threw it out of bounds. And Reynolds is going crazy. And I'm like, this, you can feel that where they're playing right now, obviously it's different with the NCAA tournament down the road. But that, that, that mattered today. You know, it is a huge home court advantage and that is so important. And really, they have to credit the crowd for the win. I mean, that, that was something that you see in, in the really big games the crowd came through for him Kelly how about Diamond Johnson we just spoke to her but the way that she was able to come in the fourth quarter 14 of her 16 points and really change the game I mean we talked about what NC State is able to do shooting mm -hmm. threes and she was the perfect example of that look it's not normal I know she said I was one for 12 and I just kept shooting my mindset doesn't change that's really so hard to do. And Chelsea knows every, if you start one for 12, it's incredibly difficult to be that mentally tough. And coach, maybe it's because she's from Philly. She just doesn't care, but she kept shooting. And NC State is the best, the very best three-point shooting team in the country. They're going to make some threes. I said, look, you're not out of it if you can shoot it. Now, I still kind of thought they were out of it, but <laughs> if you can shoot the three ball like that, you're never really out of it, and that's what NC State showed. I'm passing the rock if I'm, <laughs> if I'm over <laughs> seven. I'm just like, all right now, coach. Now, I know you have faith, but I, I might need to do a couple other things. And But what a heck of a mindset for Diamond yeah. Johnson, especially at a young age, to be able to do that against that type of matchup. That's where you're going to look forward to in the NCAA tournament, in ACC tournament, and beyond that. And so if I'm Diamond Johnson, I'm like, okay, I have confidence. I have the mindset of a winner, and that's what you like to see. You do like – oh, go ahead, Coach. I'm encouraging them to pass the ball when they're a 1-12. for 12. <laughs> You are, yeah. You're like, yes, that's a good yeah, idea. You should, should do that. We'll have more on this game coming up a little bit later. Definitely want to talk the Louisville side of things as well because the way that they played in the first half mm -hmm. looked like a team that could not be stopped. So we'll break that down as well. How about what we saw from Louisville and NC State? What a comeback it was. But what went wrong for Louisville more after this? into nothing but net how about what we saw from nc state in the fourth quarter you guys 31 to 9 they outscored louisville they were trailing by 14 entering the fourth quarter lots of breakdown with this game but first let's send it out to rebecca lobo and ryan rucco what an incredible game in raleigh the atmosphere electric the fourth quarter, unforgettable. I mean, Louisville had dominated this game for three quarters. They had totally mystified the NC State offense. They had harassed them, bullied them. And then in the fourth quarter, everything changed, and Diamond Johnson led the charge for the Wolfpack. Well, it started on the defensive end for NC State. They were able to get stops, and then when they went the other way, Diamond Johnson had complete control for her team offensively. They needed somebody to be able to come in and score. She was able to do that. She, they needed somebody to settle them down and make threes. She was able to do that, and once she did, and they were able to start to mount their comeback, everybody else on the team could exhale and just do what they normally do. What a fourth quarter led by that young woman. 
31 to 8, NC State outscores Louisville in the fourth quarter. These are two of the top four teams in the nation. Saw a lot to love, a lot to be excited about. Certainly could envision them meeting again in an ACC championship game, huh? I, I think we would all be lucky if that were to happen because this was an incredible game. Absolutely remarkable fourth quarter from NC State. An unforgettable atmosphere here in Raleigh and a terrific game on our Thursday night showcase. Ryan and Rebecca, thanks. We would love a rematch of it, maybe once in the ACC, once in the tournament. Just keep giving us more of this game. We talked about NC State and what went right for them. And let's talk a little bit about Louisville. And Kelly, I do want to start with how this game started, because up until the fourth quarter, it looked like there was no way that Louisville wasn't going to win. I was really impressed because I didn't think that Louisville could turn NC State over like they did all these other teams where they're averaging over 22 points per game off of turnovers. I didn't think they could do it, and they did. So that was very impressive. But I think the real issue for Louisville when the game flipped was when you've got to make shots down the stretch, when you can't win the game defensively, you have to go win it offensively, who's going to do that for you? Diamond Johnson did that for NC State. Van Lith, Inksler, Kiana Smith, you have all these options, but no one was really able to step up and make the big shots. Chelsea? For me, as a point guard, I, I would have I would think like I need to organize my team. We need to good get a good shot on goal. I don't think they're down, and I mean this one's going to hurt. Yeah. Like this is a loss that's like okay, we're we're going to be waiting to play them again in the tournament, in the ACC tournament, and then in the NCAA tournament. But for me, I, I'm looking at myself as a leader on this team. How what's the next step? How do I not have this happen again? In in-game situations, you're going to have to close out games in the tournament. Coach, you told us that if there was a game that you were coaching in where it was a close game and you lost, then you immediately in that game were watching film. It, after this one, after a loss like that, as a coach, kind of what's the mindset and the mentality as you try to move forward? Yeah, I'm going right to the film room with my assistant coaches, <laughs> and we are only watching the fourth quarter. Mm. I, I don't want to see that happy stuff that went on early in the game because <laughs> we didn't win the game. Why, why did we lose it? What happened? Was it the zone? Was it our defense? Was it our offense? I think they both made great points. Kelly saying, who's going to take that shot for us mm -hmm. at the end of the game? Cochran had the hot hand. She's not really your go-to player. What are we going to do moving forward? This is going to happen again if we don't fix it now. So we keep talking about what's going to happen moving forward. And Chelsea, you mentioned if you're Louisville, you're sitting there saying, I can't wait to play them again. Mm -hmm. What do you take from this game? Is this a continuation to springboard your season and motivate you? Is this something that can t potentially hurt you and there's a fallout? Or, or what happens for Louisville next? I think it's a teaching point on all levels. I think it's a teaching point of what you do when – they totally changed their defense. NC State got really, really aggressive defensively. They picked up past the half court line, mm -hmm. making deflections, making them turn over the ball. I think it's a teaching point for NC State as well. Like, we can do this a lot of the times. They did this against one of the best teams in the country. So what does that look like in the ACC tournament? What does it look like in the NCAA tournament? And then for Louisville, I'm questioning, like, where is our identity when st things like this happen? We talked about it defensively and offensively. How do we get those two to coincide and work together to get wins? I just think overall you have to be better offensively if you want to make a Final Four. And I, Coach and I were talking about this on the way in. When's the last time a team made the Final Four with their leading score averaging 12 points per game? I love this Louisville team. I love watching them. The energy they bring defensively is really fun. But in the end, you don't have a player that can go out there and is guaranteed to give you 20 a night. I think that's where Louisville is right now. Still plenty of season left, plenty of time to figure it out. I mean, th everything's fine. But what you got, Chelsea? <laughs> the wheels are turning over there. <laughs> I, I just think that Haley Van Liff is capable. I think Emily Angsler is capable. No, capable, yes. But, like, guaranteed? I think you're working on that. I think sometimes we look to a certain player all the time, but some. I think this Louisville team is rostered in a way that Emily Engsler, we weren't expecting this from her. So now she's become a go-to player, a person that people have to pay attention to. Haley Van Lip's been that she had been struggling, but now she's getting better. I think it just depends on the game, and when you have five people on the court that's able to take over depending on the game, I think that's a teaching moment for them, and I think that may be possible in the ACC tournament. It's a fair point because Van Lith and Keanu Smith have made big shots this season. And this is just more the way I think. I'm not sure 
Like, you, you need some offensive firepower to win a national championship. And you look at the other teams in the top four, South Carolina, NC State, Stanford. These are teams that can really score, and Louisville's still working to prove that. Yeah, but I think as a coach, you kind of need to pick it. You, you need to come in and say, Engsler is going to be our go-to player. Mm. We're going to get her the ball down the stretch, and maybe we'll put Kiana Smith on her side of the floor. We'll get her on the block. We have a shooter on that side. We've got Haley Van Lith maybe coming off a ball screen. She's proved she can make some big shots. But those two... Haley Van Lith and Engsler, they're the two I'm going to go to, and I'm going to work on that at practice. Here's what we're doing late in the game when the other team's making a run. Haley Van Lith with 14, Engsler with 15, and then Olivia Cochran, who had that fantastic first half, finished with 19 points. You know who I wouldn't want to be right now? Wake Forest. Yeah. Because oh, they're yeah. up next for oh, Louisville. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to get a mad, hungry Wake Forest team. I might not want to be Florida State, Duke, or Miami <laughs> either, if I'm being honest with you, after the way that that felt after losing that game. Because I would expect the response from this team, Coach, is going to be immediate. You, you know, you might be looking forward to, hey, I can't wait to see him play them again, but I just can't wait to get back out there. You know, you hope that way as a coach. You hope, and I, I love playing teams after we lost because I knew my team was going to be ready. That's when you find out the identity of your team what's their character like are they going to be able to come back or are they so just just oh I mean it was just, just such a collapse yeah. Kelly that it's hard to come back Kelly from. what's the most important thing for Louisville in this next stretch of games I look coach I'm with you I think they're going to be ready to go and I think just to, to see to see who steps up to see who steps up offensively and, and Chelsea you hit on it consistency who can be the most consistent? Lately, Van Lith and Kiana Smith have both been very consistent. And I was super high on Kiana Smith. She didn't do too much in this game. Just seeing more offensive consistency because we know what they can bring defensively, night in and night out. There's no one questioning that. But can we see a little more consistency on the offensive end? Yeah, I, I think Emily Ingsler has been great on both ends of the floor. And I think you stick with that. Like, with, with, with one game, it's a bad game. It hurts. It stinks. But you're also, you're going to go to your go-tos in Haley Van Lith and Engsler. And the best teams take those learning moments and turn them into teaching moments. And then you see the results down the year. We will see what happens next for Louisville and NC State. And we will see what happens Sunday on ACC Network. Got a quadruple header for you. Here are two of the games. NC State going to be playing at 4 o'clock right here. And then it is a top 20 matchup. Noon right here on ACC Network, North Carolina and Georgia Tech. We will have you covered all day. Spend your Sunday with us here on ACC Network. Let's give out some game balls. Coach, who you got tonight? Well, pretty easy decision for me. I thought Diamond Johnson from NC State, the turning point in the game. She comes into the fourth quarter, one for 12. Maybe she should get most courageous award for continuing <laughs> to shoot the ball. But she hit some huge threes, turned the game around, did a great job defensively. I thought she was the key to their win. Cal, what do you got? I think I'm next. I we'll go. Okay, I am next. I am next. We're just sitting in the wrong order. Um, my game ball is I'm sticking with NC State, and I'm going with Wolfpack Nation, the crowd that was so great in Reynolds Coliseum for NC State, and they stuck with them. Look, they're lining up in the rain to get in. They got off to a slow start. Louisville controlled the game, but the crowd stuck with them, and I thought that was really impressive. The students showed up. It was bucket hat night. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that, Kelsey. <laughs> My game ball goes to Wolfpack Nation and Reynolds I didn't tonight. even know that was a theme that they did, bucket hat night. Chelsea? Well, got to go with Boston College and Cam Schwartz. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I can't bring out the red phone and just not talk about upset alert here. She's been on fire helping Boston College get a top top win here today. It's going to be great to see what Boston College continues to do throughout this tough stretch that they had. For Kelly, Coach, Chelsea, Kelsey, our producer Cody, we will see you next Thursday. More from the ice a bit later. A lot going on in college basketball. Huge showdown with the ladies. Number three versus number four. And it more than lived up to the billing. Louisville arrived in Raleigh, taking on NC State, riding a 15-game winning streak. And here off the block, cards push. Emily Engsler. Ooh. Give. Dumps it to Olivia Cochran. Cardinals lead by six. Good luck down low. Defense to offense. Cochran gathers and collects, and Wolfpack well below their average. Just 21 points, 10 turnovers in the first half. Jeff Walls loving the effort he saw from the cards on the road in the first half.
We're playing with a lot of intensity. We're doing a great job of mixing up and trying to keep them off balance. But Holly, I'll be honest, I've heard the weather's bad outside, and I think we should finish up right now. <laughs> for everybody's safety, for everybody's safety, we ought to all just head home. That, that would have been better for the road team because NC State, who entered the fourth, trailing by 14, where teams this year three and 1,278, mm. they're bucking the trend. That's why they're number four in the nation. Johnson with the three. Then it's Jakia Brown-Turner. Another three. Then here comes the pack on the run, and that's Alisa Kunane. Now we're up to 10 in a row. That's three the hard way from Kunane. It's an 11-0 run. Johnson all alone, wrong person to leave all alone. Diamond Johnson hits that one. And it's a 17 to nothing run. Woo. More importantly, a two possession lead. Then Brown Turner, another three. So State comes roaring back from down 14 to win it with a remarkable fourth. 31 and a quarter, the most for them this season. Five of six from three. They outscore Louisville by 23. Only instance of a team outscoring a, an opponent by 20 points in any quarter, not just the fourth of an AP top five matchup. This is the list right here. NC State is a pretty good company there.